Your first step in this lab is to get two pieces of dialysis tubing. They should be soaking in water, but if you happen to get a dry piece, you can soak it into some distilled water for a couple of minutes, and then it should work just fine. The first thing we're going to do with my piece of dialysis tubing here is tie one end shut so that we can put liquid in the other end without it falling out the bottom. So if you kind of rest it on the edge of a beaker, like so, and get a piece of waxed dental floss, waxed so it doesn't absorb water and add any weight to our cell, then we can take this end here. We should have plenty of dialysis tubing to work with. And we're going to tie a double knot in our floss to close up this end of our cell model. And I'm going to do the same thing with my second piece of dialysis tubing as well. Our next step in this lab is to fill each one of our cell models with a different solution. This orangey one here is a glucose solution, and this cloudy white one is a starch solution. And remember, glucose is a building block of starch, so the molecules in this solution are basically bigger versions of the molecules that are in this solution. I'm going to start with my glucose solution, and I'll get my piece of dialysis tubing. And I'm going to kind of move my fingers back and forth over the edge here, and I should get it to kind of pop open, like so. And then I can get several dropperfuls of this orange solution here and put it inside of my dialysis tubing. It usually takes about three to four good dropperfuls to fill your dialysis tubing. And we've got something that looks kind of like this now. The next thing I'm going to do is tie off the open end, and I want to try to make it as, as tight as possible. Um, so what I can do is kind of close the end, and I'm going to give it a twist here, and I'm going to kind of keep twisting it until I get a really nice, firm uh, cell here full of my uh, glucose solution. So there's my first model of a cell. Uh, with this now, I would want to give it a, a quick rinse and then blot it dry with a paper towel uh, before doing anything else. Next, I'm going to fill up my second cell model uh, with the starch solution. I'm going to stir the starch solution up a little bit because the, the starch kind of settles out sometimes. Now, just like last time, I'm going to give this a twist here. I'm going to try not to trap any air inside of my cell if I can avoid it. But if you get some small bubbles, it's not a huge deal. You can see I've got a little bubble in there. Not a big deal, but we want to try to get as much air out as we can. And then just like my last one, I'm going to tie this, this open end shut with another piece of dental floss. And I'm also going to do the same with this one. I'm going to rinse it off and then blot it dry with a paper towel before I do anything else with it. Next, we're going to measure the initial mass of both of our cell models. And then because that weigh boat has a little mass of its own, 2.17 grams, I'm going to press 0. And it's going to ignore that, and now it reads as 0 grams. So anything we add to it will be the weight of just our cell model uh, and none of the weight of the uh, weighing boat. So first I'm going to go ahead and take the mass of my glucose cell. 
And after I've written that down, then I can take that out, and I'm gonna then take the mass of my starch cell. And this will allow me to, to detect any changes in mass uh, due to diffusion or osmosis after we put this cell model uh, into a, a beaker of distilled water. Next, I'm gonna get two beakers full of distilled water. In the one beaker that I'm gonna use for my starch cell, I'm gonna begin by adding 10 drops of this iodine or Lugol's solution here, which is toxic by the way, so you wanna make sure that you don't ingest any and you wanna make sure that you wash your hands after using it. And we're gonna put 10 drops just into this one beaker here. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of a, a stir. And we won't see all of the yellowish brown go away, but it will get a little bit lighter after we, we do that. So that one we can tell is our starch solution, and we wanna leave the other one alone. We don't need to add an indicator to it because later on we're gonna use some test strips to determine whether or not the glucose diffused out of our cell. So into this beaker that I've prepared with some iodine, I'm gonna put my starch cell. The reason I added the iodine is because it turns kind of a, a dark blue, almost purple, in the presence of starch. So it's not turning purple yet, which means that none of the starch is leaving our cell, but we're gonna have to leave it here for a little while in order to determine whether or not that starch is able to diffuse through this dialysis tubing membrane. Into my other beaker, the one that is just clear, I'm gonna put my glucose cell. And I don't need an indicator for this one because later on, I'm gonna use these test strips to test the water outside of the cell to see if it has any glucose in it. Right now, it does not because it's just distilled water. I'm going to drop my cell in there like so and let nature take its course and we'll come back in a little while and take some measurements and see what happened. So it's been about a half an hour at this point and now it's time to take a look and see if we have any evidence of materials moving across that membrane. So if we start by looking at this cell over here, we certainly don't see any visible difference, but that's why we have these glucose test strips. These glucose test strips will allow us to determine if there's any glucose in the water outside of that cell. Over here, however, we can see some really interesting things happening. First of all, we should notice that the liquid outside of the cell, the extracellular environment, did not turn blue or purple. And if you think about what that indicator inside of here indicates, that should tell you something about whether or not diffusion has happened in this particular case. However, we do see that there's some of that bluish purple color on the inside of our cell, which you might recall was not there before. And again, if we think about what that color is supposed to indicate to us, we should be able to draw some conclusions about what exactly is happening here and if diffusion is occurring, we can say something about what is diffusing and in what direction based on where we see that blue. As for our other cell, we're going to have to use these glucose test strips to test the water and see if the glucose made it out of the cell or not. I got two of these test strips just because I want you to be able to compare the original with what happens after. So I'm going to leave one of these outside and then I'm going to take the other one and dip it down inside of uh, this container and leave it there for about 30 seconds or so. After waiting for a little while, I should be able to take it out and compare it to the other test strip. So here we can see that this one is fairly green. And if we compare that to what we started with, which is this kind of blue green color here, you can see that there definitely was a color change. And that color change indicates to us based on this scale here that we do in fact have something in the water that is causing that color change. The last piece of data I'm gonna to need to record is a final mass for each one of my cells. I'm gonna start by taking out the glucose cell from its environment, and I'm gonna start by drying it off because I don't want to include the mass of any of that water on the outside uh, in my, my final mass for this cell. Just like I did before, I already zeroed out my balance here, so it's ignoring the weight of this weighing boat. And once I've dried off my cell, and especially you want to make sure that you dry off the, the ends of it because they, they tend to grab a little water and kind of hold it inside of those little ends there. So you can kind of press down the paper towel 
to get the, the water out of those ends. Then I'm gonna put it back in here and take a final reading. And I can compare this to the reading that I took at the beginning of class today. So now I am done with my glucose cell and I can dispose of everything that's in that cell into a trash can. Next, I'm gonna take my starch cell. And with this one, remember, there's iodine on the outside of it. And this Lugol's solution that, that is the iodine we're talking about is toxic if you ingest it. So I'm gonna wanna make sure that I wash my hands really good after this, and I'm definitely not gonna wanna eat anything until after I do. You can see really well now how kind of bluish purple my cell turned as a result of that indicator. And then I'm going to take one last mass reading of my starch cell like so. And I compare this to the mass that I took at the beginning of this lab. So based on those observations and that data, now you should be able to draw some conclusions about which direction diffusion was occurring, if it was occurring at all, and what exactly was diffusing across this artificial membrane.